Hello friend. This message is for all of the leaders, light workers, people who are doing the hard, heavy lifting of transformation within their own life, changing, shifting, growing, because, because you know that that's what you're here for and that it is helping you step into your leadership role and serve from a place of stability and integrity. This message is for you. I don't know about you, but in these past couple of weeks, I have had abundant opportunities for growth where situations have happened that have triggered old wounds. They've triggered um, some of my limiting beliefs because I am being called right now to step more fully into my sovereignty, more fully into my truth, from a solid, stable place. So I can hold more space for my dreams and helping people. That is my dream, is helping people along this self-discovery journey that they're on. So I'm being challenged. My energetic field has been doing this, this expansion and contraction. So if you're right there with me, hold on to your seat. I have an oracle card for you. I pulled this from the Angels and Ancestors oracle card deck. It's the Water Guardian. Connect with your emotions. This is a beautiful card. This is a water angel in the picture. Just take it in and see how that feels. So, something interesting that keeps coming up um, and I think that this is your message. You know, we do so much uh, work for, for ourselves when we are trying to learn how to lead other people as light workers, right? We also do a lot of work for ourselves, just for ourselves. And sometimes when we are on this path, um, it can get a little confusing with being that leader, being in your role, and also going through your own growth. Your own growth is never going to stop. It's a simultaneous journey. As you grow, your abilities and your capacity to hold space for others will grow. So you're simultaneously working on yourself and helping other people. You will never be challenged with helping people through something that you've never been through. But there are so many layers, as you know, so many layers to, um, to unraveling and understanding the truth and the essence of who and what you are underneath the fears and conditioning and the stories that we tell ourselves that we've adopted through our development as a human. So. What do we do when we are faced with an opportunity, something in our life that comes up and triggers an old wound and we feel this constriction and we feel ourselves resisting? This is about resistance in your growth, knowing how to identify it understanding that you always have a choice. You have a choice of whether you want to stay where you are because it's comfortable or you want to grow, expand, and step up into that higher consciousness and embody that higher aspect of you. That in itself, knowing that it's a choice, is empowering. So you get to choose. In that moment that you feel constriction, in the moment that you experience pain and emotions that are maybe very uncomfortable. You can either deal with it as you usually do, and I don't know how that is for you, but I'll give you an example for me. Um, this week I was challenged with this, uh, something that I actually forgot I forgot a deadline and it kind of like screwed things up for me and I felt super defensive and I felt this trigger of like, oh crap, I, I didn't do it good enough. I messed up. I'm not perfect. I should have done it better. 
I deserve to feel like crap about this. And these are all old limiting beliefs. It also made me feel like I'm the one who has to do everything and I screwed it up. So now what? I'm not good enough, right? And as I started to play that old story in my head over and over, even when I wasn't thinking about it, I knew my subconscious was there because I was, my heart just felt like this and it was like closing off and all of my inner dialogue was about, it was defensive talk to myself like, oh, well, I didn't do it because of this or I, I should have done it because of that. And everything was just kind of like this way of thinking and speaking to myself that was not loving and supportive. So I knew I had some work to do. First of all, I wanted to do that work because I felt like crap and my heart was hurting and I felt the resistance to growth. So what did I do? And I'm telling you this because it's an example for what you can do if you feel yourself in these places of painful emotions. So I said to the universe, please help me, help me to release this resistance and accept your support. Show me in ways that you want to support me because I don't have to do it all on my own. I know that half of that problem that wants to be released in my critical thinking is thinking that I have to do it on my own in a certain way or else it's wrong. So I said, I'm gonna release this storyline. I'm going to shift my perspective. I'm gonna open up my heart to receive support. I'm gonna let my higher self, I'm gonna feel that presence of my higher self fully embodying in my energy field and release that fear. And that fear of like, maybe a little girl who's scared that she has to take care of herself and she has to get it right. So how did I release it? This is the important part that I really want to talk about. I met that aspect of me and I said, I see you, I love you. It's okay to feel scared. It's okay to feel defensive. These are all natural feelings. And I just sat with that and I allowed myself to feel that. I allowed my emotions to run their course and I held a space for that scared little girl from my higher self. I let my higher self hold the scared girl and nurture it and say, let's heal together. Take my hand, let's integrate this part of us together. I can help you when you show up. I'm not going to ignore you. I'm not going to push you away because I know you'll get louder and stronger. And please show me how I can heal and make that part of me whole. How can I see the truth behind this storyline that's a lie? What is the truth? The truth is I'm human, I, I make mistakes. And I'm the only one being that harsh on myself. There's nobody else outside of me saying, you did it so wrong and now you're screwed. There might be somebody like that, but guess what? If they're saying that, I get to decide where my, my boundary is with them of if I believe I'm worthy based on what they're saying, or if I'm accepting and loving and kind to that scared part of me to love and nurture and integrate it and allow that emotion to take its course and teach me so I can step into my fullness. I believe that when I do this, when I'm working on myself in this way, I believe that is what shifts the paradigm of this earth, of things that we believe as a collective to be true that are not. And one of those huge things that's being shifted right now is what we believe. This is happening through each one of us in our self-talk. What do we believe about ourselves? What do we accept about ourselves? What do we believe mandates our worthiness? 
Do I believe that my worthiness comes from a source outside of me or within me? Do I believe that I can heal myself from inside of me and get to know myself or that I need something or someone outside of me to rescue me that is stronger than me? Of course, we all need guidance that comes in the form of external, maybe mentors or spirit guides or even the universe directing our path a little, but that's guidance. It's not someone telling you you're worthy. Then, the, okay, so I'm just gonna let that land for a minute. We're shifting the paradigm of the constructs that we have built ourselves and humanity about what is acceptable, what's acceptable behavior, how we will be treated, how we will see ourselves, our connection with each other. And as we clear that up and forgive ourselves, we're able to forgive other people and then the whole, the whole is healed. So there's another card that I pulled that I want to share with you real quick. Past life, present power. This is from the goddess Isis Oracle deck. If you don't know the goddess Isis, she's an Egyptian goddess who, um, she wears many different names. She's like the goddess of a thousand names and has like thousands of archetypes that she represents. And one of them is soul retrieval. So retrieving parts of our soul that is in the shadow that we've outcast that we wouldn't give attention to, retrieving those parts of us to heal and, and integrate into our lives. Just like that story I told you, that experience I went through gave me an opportunity to feel very deeply pain that wanted to be seen and nurtured and healed. That's soul retrieval. So this talks about you healing yourself and being freed. And I'm just gonna read it to you. How's that? Let me read you this card. It says, past life, present power. As the soul grows in service to the great feminine and her intention that all beings be healed and free. It gathers internal resources to assist on the path. These resources include powers and gifts from other lifetimes. You are currently integrating past life abilities. Be open to what is taking place as your soul awakens ancient power and abilities in you. You have an eternal well of knowledge and wisdom that is within you that you carry from lifetime to lifetime. That is your soul, that is your soul's wisdom. And as you go through this healing journey, those parts of you will come up and you will remember them. And sometimes you'll think, how in the world did I know that? Wow, where did that wisdom come from? It's from being tapped into your intuition. So your intuition can be any voice. It could be the voice of reason. It could be the voice of doubt. It could be the voice of your higher self. The key is to understand and know what voice is speaking so you can know that part of you and know what that part of you is requiring of you. This part of me that comes up that wants to be seen, if I acknowledge it and get to know it and love it, I'm knowing myself on a deeper level. I'm understanding myself layers and layers and layers. And the more I do that, the more I understand the human race. And there's no stopping to how much we can learn, which is amazing. So I invite you today to take note of the emotions that are arising in your life. The patterns of thoughts that are the inner dialogue in your mind, in your head, how you're speaking to yourself, 
and if you are restricting or resisting any change, it's okay if you don't want to come out of where you are. If you're suffering right now and you don't want to come out of that right now, you're not ready. It's okay, but know that it's a choice and knowing that you choose to stay there is empowering. It's your choice and you can learn from anywhere you are. So I'm going to send you guys all kinds of love and I hope to see you soon. If you're looking for a more personal understanding of what's going on in your life and an in-depth reading, um, check out my website and the comments are below. Love you guys.